asked you, do you think it's going to be helpful, this new training, or are there other types of training that should be looked at or at least researched? I think I talked with um, police standards and training, and the average police cadet really just gets officer-involved training during the shooting portion of his training. There's not a whole lot involved, and I think NAMI already does um, something, I think they get something like 16 hours of training dealing with mental health. Yeah, it's a significant amount. But as far as officer-involved shooting, there seems to be very, very little specific training to how to deal with that or to look at other opportunities. I know people often say to me, why don't they use um, taser? Why don't they use the rubber bullets, for instance? Is there some reason that we're not doing that in New Hampshire? So a few different things. So police officers receive training constantly. So they're, they're getting training constantly about dealing with people with issues, but also on deadly force issues because they have to qualify every year. So they do get that training constantly. Um, also, some departments will look at other officer-involved shooting incidents and they'll, they'll essentially debrief on those and discuss those. And I've gone out to police departments and talked to police departments about the law, about uh, the law surrounding officer-involved use of deadly force and also just about cases as well as a, as a training procedure. Mm-hmm. And so that happens. Um, as far as what would, would be called less than lethal means, and that's things like tasers, rubber bullets, things like that, um, those are for less than lethal situations. And if a private citizen or a police officer is in a deadly force situation, uh, they are not required to use something less than lethal, and that could actually be deadly for themselves or another person. So police officers do use those tools mm-hmm. in, in non-lethal situations. Mm-hmm. Um, but if, if a police officer is facing someone who has a gun and is shooting at the police officer, obviously the response is not to use tasers or something less than lethal. Is that unique to New Hampshire or, uh, or state by no. state? Uh, because I know some states, I think there's a little bit more of a movement towards trying some of the different less than lethal methods. No, it's not unique to New Hampshire. Again, no, no police officer is going to use a taser when someone is shooting at them. Just like a private citizen is not likely not going to use a baseball bat when someone comes into their home and points a shotgun at them. So it depends on the facts and circumstances. Um, it also depends on how much time we're talking. If you're in a standoff situation where you have somebody who's in a home threatening to harm themselves or others, it may be that the officers do have more time to use less than lethal means to try and negotiate with that person. So again, it all depends on the situation. But whether it's a police officer or a private citizen, if that individual faces deadly force, they are allowed to use deadly force in response. And that's even if they have other means at their disposal. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I have to backtrack because I can't remember what your answer was. But did, um, did investigators do fingerprint testing on the gun in the Cody LaFont case? Do you know? That's kind of a detail there. So as I said, I'm not going to discuss oh, the right. details That's of that case because we're undergoing review. I refer you back to the report. Okay. Um, thank you. This is great You're for welcome. taking the time today. Happy we to really do it. appreciate it.